Got a boring sky? Replaced in just a few clicks. If you're in Final Cut and you get these blown out or just bland skies, why not replace them with something more dramatic and awe-inspiring? You're gonna see how to do that in just a few clicks so you can make more epic looking shots in Final Cut Pro 10. In the last Photoshop release, a new sky replacement feature was added that uses AI. Photographers and Instagrammers have been taking advantage of this to really enhance the look of their images. Although to purists, the use of this feature is seen as controversial. But we thought, what the heck, it's all movie making magic for us anyway, so we thought we'd try it in Final Cut Pro 10. So here's what to do to achieve this effect on dull or flat looking skies with no detail. To make sure this works, first make sure that your shot is static or locked down on a camera tripod. For a moving shot, it will require complex tracking and compositing in a software like Adobe After Effects, but we'll skip that in favor of simplicity and this will be adequate for say an establishing or opening shot of a location. A drone shot will even work as long as the drone is stable and the horizon doesn't change too much, but if it does move a little, towards the end of the video, I'll show you how to address it. Just remember to plan these shots out in advance. Once you have the shots, here's what to do in Final Cut. Here we have two examples. One is on a tripod and the other from a drone moving forward in a straight line at sustained speed. Also, by sticking to the end, you can find out how you can snag these free sky replacements. We'll first start with the tripod shot of a desert. This works as an establishing shot, but the sky just looks bland or mediocre. We'll fix that with a nice set of clouds. First, I'll apply the keyer effect to the clip and sample the sky. The result is not that good, but with the color selection and matte tools, we can refine it. Next, you'll want to find either a static sky image or video and position it below the clip so it shows up. You then may need to resize and reposition it as to make it work with the clip. You'll want to pay close attention to edges so that it doesn't look like it's cut out. We could just soften the key, but I like to use a different method to better blend the horizon with the sky. So to do that, let's make a copy of the clip by holding the Option key and dragging to make a copy of the clip, then position it on top. Next, delete the key effect from this version of the clip and then add the graduated mask effect. What this is doing is it's creating a nice feather or blending effect between the horizon and the new sky. Just play around with the positioning of this until you reach a sweet spot. To finally sell this as photorealistic, we'll blend the whole composition further by creating a new copy of the clip and position it at the bottom below the sky and delete the key effect. Going back to the sky image, we'll bring the opacity down to reveal a little of the original image below. What this does is it allows us to strike a nice balance between the original and our fake sky. Bam! Okay, so what are we missing? Well, of course the cherry on top, which is color grading, but to apply a single cohesive look to this composite will require us to combine them together so we can apply the same color grade to the whole. To do that, select all the clips, right click, and choose create a new compound clip. You can use the built-in color tools, or in my case, I'll use cinema grade. You can click directly on the image in the viewer and drag up to bring up the exposure. Then switch to saturation and drag up to bring up the saturation a little. Coming over to the final grading page, let's preview some different LUTs. I like the look of the duotone LUT, so I'll apply it. By the way, you can get this LUT as part of 70 free LUTs that you can download. I'll include a link for it in the card. Now let's fine tune the color of the sky. I want to darken the blues to make the sky even more dramatic. For that, you can click on it with the Vectors tool and drag directly on the sky while holding down Command. That blue is now way too intense, so let's bring its saturation down by clicking on it and dragging down while holding the Shift key. And let's tweak the color of the sky a little too by dragging directly on it to give it more of an aquatone. Hit Apply and voila! Our desert shot looks so awesome! Here's a before and after of the grade. Big difference. But even cooler than that, look at where we started. 
You can see why this can have such a big impact on the look of your films. Now, the first one was straightforward in terms of being a locked off shot, but what do we do if there's some camera movement? In this next shot from a drone, although we can see the drone moving forward in a straight line, we do see a little bit of drift. If you pay close attention to the mountain in the background, it is slowly moving towards the right and that'll give our fake sky away because it is not moving along with it. We'll come back how to address that in a moment. Let's first replace the sky with something that is really over the top dramatic, like say the sky from this stunning sunset. The first thing, if you remember, is to apply the keyer and use the sample tool to select the sky, then refine it with the color selection tools. Now one thing you'll notice here is if you toggle the keyer on and off, you can see that it's affecting the colors in the shot. That's because the keyer effect is applying spill suppression, which is often used in keying green screens and you don't want that, so bring the spill level down to zero. That's easy enough. Next, you'll add the sunset image below the clip and reposition it in a way that makes sense for the perspective of the shot. As a final touch, to make this blend more with the original and match the colors and contrast more evenly, let's go back to the keyer in our clip and change the mix value, effectively changing the opacity of the keyer and letting through some of the original image. Now let's take a look at how it looks when we play back the clip. Aha, there's the issue with the mountain slowly moving to the right being a dead giveaway that our sky is fake. So here's what to do to address these kinds of situations. We'll want to animate or keyframe the sky. So to do that, we'll first position the playhead at the beginning of the shot, making sure to have the sky image selected and select the add keyframe button for the position value. Now, every time we move the sky position, the value will be saved as a keyframe. The key to making this work is we'll need a reference point to make sure that we animate the sky in sync with the movement of the mountain. You can see here a dent in the line of clouds and right below it coincides with a dent in the mountain. We want that to stay there throughout the duration of the shot. So let's move the playhead to the end of the clip and move the position until those two dents coincide again. If you right click over the sky image and select show video animation, you can actually see the keyframes we just created. In this particular case, I think those two keyframes are enough to keep the movement of both images in sync. But if your shot needs more movement corrections along the way, you can add as many keyframes as needed to sell the shot. Let's close the video animation view and play back the clip. Perfect. Now we'll do like we did before and turn this into a compound clip so we can grade it. I'll add cinema grade. And since this doesn't need a further base correction, I'll jump straight to the final grading page and browse the LUT previews. I like the thriller look, but it's a little too intense, so I'll bring its effect down with a mix control. I'll adjust the shadows and midtones by clicking directly on those areas in the image and dragging up and down to create nicer contrast. We'll finally hit apply, and that's it. Let's play this clip again. This is like super epic for an establishing shot, right? I mean, how else would you do this unless you camped out at the spot until you got that perfect sunset? And that's the power of Hollywood magic. So I just wanna point out, if you like the things that you saw here in the color grading, then I suggest that you check out Cinema Grade. Rather than relying on 20 year old controls like color wheels and curves, the new way to color grade is by clicking and grading directly in the viewer. You also saw that you get real time previews of LUTs, making finding the right look easier and faster. You also get a side by side view for copying and matching shots support for the x right color checker chart for doing auto corrections, and the list goes on. This works on the new M1 Max, and if you'd like to find out more about Cinema Grade, you can visit the link in the description below and use code YouTube20 for 20% off at checkout for a limited time. Oh, and before I let you go, I'll include a link to the free sky images below. That's it, my name is Denver Riddle. Leave a comment or a like if you'd like, and subscribe for more ways to get cinema quality video.